So over 10 years ago, I was a big Chrome fanatic because that's what was cool, and also I didn't know any better. And while Chrome, especially back then, was a super powerful and fast browser that blew away the competition, as I started digging into some of the privacy implications of using a browser like Chrome, I realized that there were simply just better options out there for somebody who cares a little bit about their data. So today, I wanna to walk through my mobile browser journey. One of the tools that significantly helped me not just protect my personal information online, but understand it is Delete Me. I've been a subscriber to Delete Me for years now, and they send me scheduled reports of where any of my personal information pops up around the internet and what they've removed which has been especially helpful in trying to deal with those stubborn people searching websites that I hate. The big selling point for me is I don't have to take the manual route to take care of this anymore. My time is just simply better spent in other areas of my life, and the convenience provided by Delete Me has been a no-brainer. I can even put my energy into other areas of my digital rights journey as a result of my saved time dealing with data brokers and other nonsense. If you're also somebody who values control over your personal information and who can ultimately have access to it, Delete Me is a fantastic tool to get that job done that I cannot recommend enough to help clean up your digital footprint online. Not only are they sponsoring this video, but they're also running a special campaign for 20% off using the code TECHLORE. I'll leave the link down in the description as well as the code for you all who are interested to go get signed up. So I'm going to start with Android, and trust me, eventually I will cover iOS, so you're definitely going to get a nice fix today. With Chrome, I think it goes without saying that, especially back then, it was by far the fastest browser to use. You can feel a difference using Chrome. It also uh, integrated with Google's ecosystem, which I used to be a part of back then, and it just worked. There was nothing to really worry about, and also it's a cross-platform option, so you can have Chrome set up on all of your devices, and it can synchronize easily, and uh, I think there's something to be said for that. The cons I've already expressed, which is it's not the most uh, privacy respecting option. Also, it's very much involved uh, to the Google ecosystem to the point where now they're pushing a lot of technologies that you probably don't want in your browser. I don't know who asked for a, a new way to be tracked online. Um, no one really asked for this kind of thing. So I'd say about nine years ago-ish, I started playing around with Firefox, especially on Android. And um, I, back then I really didn't like Firefox. And especially on mobile, I just felt like the UI was very dated. It felt significantly slower to use than Chrome. Chrome did, um, and I just had a lot of issues with it, but on the plus side, it was an open source option, and there was a lot more transparency behind it. My cat seems to enjoy this part of the video. Um, and also it's run by at least like a nonprofit organization whose, sor whose sole goal isn't to just track you around the internet. Another cool thing is Firefox on mobile has really, for as far as I can remember, supported extensions like you would have on your desktop but on your phone, which to this day, uh, Chrome doesn't support. Now from there, I liked Firefox, but uh, I started working with workflows that included no Google Play services and no kind of Google App Store whatsoever. And that's where I started utilizing custom ROMs and also things like F-Droid. For those who don't know, custom ROMs are essentially uh, different versions of Android that you can install yourself and flash yourself and they're like custom versions of Android, many of which don't come with Google Play services whatsoever. So where do you get your apps? Some things like F-Droid, which are open source app stores. And um, they're really great little app stores that only have open source applications, but there is no Firefox on F-Droid. What there is is something called Fennec back in the day uh, before we had some other options that I'll talk about about definitely later in the video. I also played around with Firefox Focus for a while as more of a disposable browser, which is more of a like, do some searches, close the app, it forgets all of your browsing history type of situation. Um, so those were all things I played with, and frankly, they're fine at what they did, and I don't have much to complain about outside of, I felt like I always needed multiple browsers to kind of have a clean workflow on Android. Now there was a project that I liked a lot that did cease to exist, though it's apparently going to exist again, or it might already, I haven't really been keeping up with it, but it was called Bromite. Bromite was a Chromium based browser, so it looked like and functioned like Chrome as you know it. It's based on Chrome, um, but it had a lot of things built into it out of the box that made it very appealing. Like it had an always incognito mode. It allowed you to uh, install things like an ad blocker directly in there. It had tracker protection. It had a lot of other great things in there that made it a probably, in my opinion, one of the best, most robust uh, privacy and security browsers for Android. Unfortunately, it was in some way, shape, or form, I don't know if it was discontinued or if they just stopped uh, 
stopped working on it. I don't really know the formal classification for what happened, but you probably shouldn't use Bromite anymore because as far as I know, it hasn't been updated in forever. So from there, I actually migrated to Brave and this starts tying into the desktop uh, browsers video where I talked about my desktop browser journey and how I eventually settled on Brave for a very long time. And this is actually when I went all in on the Brave ecosystem, which for the record, not a bad ecosystem to be in. You have Brave Sync, which allows you to synchronize things. Brave is fully cross-platform on iOS, Android, Linux, uh, Mac OS, and Windows. And so you can have Brave installed on really any device that you can think of. And the way that it syncs is flawless. And you don't even need a Brave account to sync. It's just a QR code and some keys that you can synchronize and you're good to go. So I really like Brave Sync. That was a really solid workflow. Brave actually took a lot of what I liked about Bromite, but put it into a little bit more of a usable cross-platform package. That's actually a thing I'm gonna talk about a little bit later but I really don't like browsers that only exist on one platform or one operating system. I like to use things that allow me to move away from that operating system because the last thing I want is to feel tied to one operating system just because of the browser I choose to use or just because of the messenger I use. And to this day, when I'm using Android, Brave's still kind of my go-to option. I just haven't found something since then that really just across the board does really well. And even on something like privacytests.org, Brave does a really solid job. Now there's one browser that actually I haven't told you yet because you stuck around in the video, so I'm gonna give you a little surprise, but there's a browser that has been consistent and it's Tor Browser. Um, Tor Browser has been on all of my Android devices for as long as I can remember, um, but it's not my main go-to browser. See on Android, I like to have multiple browsers. I like to have a browser that is kind of my go-to browser for accounts. I like to have a browser that's more disposable. So I just do a search and it doesn't have to go through a normal browser that saves everything. And then I like to have Tor Browser for anything that requires a little bit more safety. So Normally on Android devices, I have some variation of those three browsers. I do have some more thoughts on just browsers as a whole, which will include more Android browsers I haven't quite mentioned yet, but I wanna talk about iOS first because iOS is actually, there's not much to cover. So for those who don't know, everything on iOS is based on WebKit, which is the Safari underlying technology. So anytime you use a browser on iOS, even if it's not Safari, even if you use Firefox on iOS or you use Chrome on iOS, you're still using the same technology as Safari. And with that comes a take that I've seen for a long time, which is you might as well just be using Safari. And I get it. I think that's a valid take. I think you might as well just go with the first party browser if every other browser uses it anyway. Where I think that logic doesn't align with my workflow is if you're using Safari, you're locked into the Safari workflow, which restricts you to only Apple devices. So if you're somebody who wants to synchronize something like your bookmarks across your devices, you better hope you have a MacBook if you wanna use that workflow. This is where I think something like Brave is really compelling on iOS, because Brave on iOS has built-in ad blocking and allows you to play YouTube videos in the background. And really the core selling point beyond any of that is the fact that you can actually use Brave on any of your devices. So the cross-platform support is really the strong selling point here for Brave. Um, and it's something that I don't feel like is discussed enough. Um, I feel like the only two core really solid browser options that exist on every platform is Firefox and Brave. And I feel like it's kind of a toss up between who you think is better. But unless you're using Chrome, what else are you gonna use with cross-platform support outside of Edge? If you do go with Safari though, I highly recommend going with Safari with something like AdGuard because that will give you some uh, ad blocking as well as some tracker protection directly built into Safari. So I think those are kind of the two core um, recommendations that I felt were best for me, but also for most people, which is Brave on iOS or Safari with AdGuard on iOS. Solid options, can't go wrong with either one of those. Um, I do want to quickly just touch on a few things on the Android side again, which is, Henry, what about like XYZ browser because there's so many browsers on Android. Um, I know that there's ones that are tied to specific Android ROMs. So you have to have a certain Android ROM to use it, which is like, okay, well, why would I want to lock myself into a specific ROM? Again, I don't want to lock myself into a specific operating system just for a browser. If you find one of those options that works for you in your specific workflow, then please use it. And the other thing too, uh, Chromite is a continuation or V2 or a, a next attempt at Bromite. And I believe that some of the developers from Bromite or maybe just one is involved in Chromite now, which 
I'm excited for. I'm not really following it too much, but that's something I've heard a little bit about. And one other project I haven't talked about on Android is called Mole. So Mole is a fork of Firefox that's almost pre-hardened out of the box for you, and it's actually a recommendation on our resources page on techlore.tech, um, and it's really solid. Um, so if you're looking for a Firefox browser on Android that's pre-hardened and takes care of everything for you, Mole is a really solid option. Um, if you don't want to go through like a, you know, fork or anything like that and you want the real deal, then you can just get Firefox for Android. I think that's a perfectly valid option. So let me finally start talking about some more summary broad things that you can all take away from this video. First off, let me condense everything I said. If you're on iOS, um, personally, what I had the most luck with is just using Safari with something like AdGuard. And getting away from Safari, you just have a good reason to do so because it's using WebKit anyway. So if you're using something like Brave um, and you are cross-syncing Brave to something else or you're using Firefox because you use Firefox on other devices, I think it's perfectly legitimate. On Android, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there's just so many options on Android. I did settle on Brave, but I think it's really silly to say there's one best option for Android. I feel like there's just no solid recommendation I can give um, outside of, again, on both iOS and Android, there's always a Tor browser. So um, there's still no official Tor browser on iOS. So I think Onion Browser is still the go-to recommendation. The cons that come to me are, I feel like there's not enough cross-platform browsers. I see a lot of these really cool Android browsers, but they're so limited in scope because because they only exist on Android. The goal is a one-to-one -one feature ratio, but that's really hard to do with how complicated operating systems are and when you have these random restrictions like what you see on iOS. So it's really hard to have a one-to-one -one, uh, feature matched iOS and Android client. Um, and I think the person who's gotten closest to it's Brave, uh, frankly. So what should you do? I recommend trying them all out. I recommend seeing how it integrates with your desktop workflow. I recommend seeing how it integrates with your mobile workflow. I recommend seeing how it integrates between all your devices. I recommend seeing which one is fastest on your devices. Try things out. It's the same takeaway as the desktop version of this video, which is try things out, figure out what works for you, and do not be afraid to try multiple browsers and utilize multiple browsers. And definitely have some fun with it, make the journey your own, and find your favorite browser. And please leave down in the description what your favorite browsers are across mobile operating systems and especially why you use them. Now that Signal allows you to hide your phone number and just use a username, uh, we now are publicizing our Signal group a little bit more publicly. Yeah, that is a private community, but as long as you join our Patreon, it's starting at $5 a month, you can access this private group and we're really trying to get more people in there because uh, the more people there, the more active it'll be. I'd like to hit 100 members at some point, so definitely go ahead and join. Um, it's literally about a cup of coffee and you get access to a private community. Um, and on that note, I just want to mention that we have our new gold sponsor, NT, who used to sponsor our forum, um, but now they've migrated to just being a uh, supporter on Patreon. So thank you, NT, for supporting our work. And that's all I have to share with you all. See you next time on TechLore, and thank you just for watching. I really appreciate it. You're all awesome, and uh, thanks for taking your digital safety a little bit better and helping protect the people around you.